No, pirates are like the first formation of like anarchism. Some of them were literally pro-abolition. They they had unionized ships. There's a lot of good pirates. There's a lot of crazy, gay, queer, communist pirates out there. I'm saying it. Oh, new Johnny Somali, the rise and fall of the Somali pirates. Wait, what the fuck? Johnny Harris made a video on the Somali pirates? That's crazy. If a person robs you on land, they are a thief. But if they rob you at sea, they're a pirate. Let's say it's 2007, and you're the captain of a cargo ship traveling off the coast of the Horn of Africa. You're transporting wheat from Kenya to Saudi Arabia. When you look out at the ocean and you see these guys, they come at you quickly, just a small- This is anti-One Piece propaganda. Small speedboat up there. And soon they're right up against the side of your ship. They're about to throw a ladder to climb up. You run into the ship's citadel or safe room and you call the Coast Guard. Or maybe you try to spray them with this water hose to scare them away. But it's too late. They've now climbed on board. They're rounding up the crew. They're gonna hold you hostage and demand a ransom of millions of dollars for anyone who will pay. The shipping company, your home government, your family, doesn't matter. And if you don't give them the money, you'll be held in captivity, starving, maybe even tortured, for days, weeks, months, even years. If there's no answer to payment of the ransom within three days, then um, the kidnappers here will sell me to, will sell me to Al-Shabaab. This happened hundreds of times. This is what a typical hijacking in this region looked like in the early 2000s, where by the end of the decade, hundreds of piracy incidents were reported every year, and they were still just getting started. Dun, 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 bum, 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 so let me show you how the Horn of Africa became the epicenter of modern day piracy bum, and how what bum, started bum, as Somali fishermen bum, defending bum, their bum, waters bum. turned into an organized criminal network. This is the rise and fall of Somali pirates. It's kind of wild that they were like able to do so much with a bunch of dinghies, you know what I mean? Like barely tiny ass fucking tiny ass bows that would tip over with like a little bit of fucking uh a little bit of wave activity and they were god man when there's a will there's a way mashallah you know you gotta say off the somali coast where those pirates attacked that vessel yes, you're dealing with irrational people if they back this book against the war i don't know what they are able to do Okay, little sidebar really quick. Um, yes, I'm wearing my orange jacket. And the captains have no weapons? Yes, uh, they're not allowed to, I think, by international law. So the link is in the description. Thank you. Here's incognito.com slash Johnny Harris. I'm giving you guys the ad. Uh, read at least the link. Talking for sponsoring the video. Let's dive into this big topic of pirates. <laughs> Stop, Dan. When pirates are not like the weird Japanese show. Listen, it's not a weird show. Also, I love that you're making fun of One Piece fans in the chat, but like, look at him. He's like also posting fucking, uh, you know, the Western uh, pirate lore. There's like plenty of... Dude, pirates are a universal concept. If anything, it's more Western than it is Japanese. Let's be real. I mean, actually, there is different kinds of pirates in ja Japan because, you know, island nation and whatnot. Pirates aren't one thing. They've always existed. As long as there's been international trade on the ocean, there have been pirates. Sailors who utilize the expanse of the open ocean to rob and steal and run sophisticated businesses. If you haven't seen CGP Grey's deep dive on pirates, go watch it. It's a two-parter. Pirates are everything from Norse sailors who raided other ships on the high seas to the famous pirates of the Caribbean, like Britain's Blackbeard, who stole a French slave ship and souped it up into the ultimate pirate vessel. Blackbeard, the greatest fucking fake friend of all time, dude. Fucking 
fake revolutionary, fake, uh, you know, fake anti-slavery piece of shit. Former slaver family goes around, acts like he's fucking pro, acts like he's in favor of um, abolition of slavery, has like so many uh, black pirates in his crew, at the end of it, betrays his best friend and also all of his black uh, crew uh, in an effort to, to kill... What? No, I'm not talking about One Piece, man. I'm talking about, like, the actual human black beard. You fucking dumbasses. No, this isn't One Piece spoilers, like... What? No, this is, like... This is actual black beard in the real world. Uh, comes from a slaver... Comes from a slaver family... And has, like, literally a, 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 a person who was enslaved by his parents as his, like, uh, I guess, quartermaster or, like, the second in command. Takes over a, a slaver ship. Is, uh, his crew is mostly, uh, his crew is mostly uh, former slaves. And then, in order to get, like, a, a, what was it, a piece of Virginia or something, he just, like, sells literally everyone on his crew. North Carolina. I don't remember where it was, but pretty sure it's just like a piece of American for, for like a little bit, um, for a little bit of American land and to be able to like live freely. Um, he, he went and he sold literally his second in command, like his childhood friend slash, uh, every single, uh, uh former slave that he, uh, you know, that he was able to to fight alongside for years and years. Uh, one of the greatest uh, fake friends of all time. Pirates were poor men who were looking for money and social mobility. Some of them were looking for fame and glory and power in a time where seafaring men had little status or opportunity in society. We've romanticized them, we've caricatured them, and we idealize them as legends and myths of the past. But piracy never fully... He wasn't a good guy, dude. He was a pirate. Uh, actually, and I did not know this at all, uh, but no, pirates are like the first formation of like anarchism and like uh, they had collective ownership. It's, it, it, it varies from pirate to pirate. Some of them were literally the uh you know pro abolition um they they had unionized ships not all uh not all pirates were as as you think they are they literally they were pretty good there's a lot of good pirates there's a lot of crazy gay queer communist fucking pirates out there i think the only issue is that they you know didn't shower they were anarchists that's what it is this chatter's a real East India co trading company head, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, like at the time, who's dominating the fucking high seas if it's not the fucking pirates? It's literally slavers, okay? It's colonizers. You know what I mean? Bro, you're arguing with Hakainu. Yeah. Like, not to take this back, not to take this back to, like, uh, you know, One Piece, but, like, you are sounding like a bunch of fucking admirals, dude. What's happening? Marcus Riddiker, a Marxist historian, has a few great books on them. He also did a great book on the slave ship as an environment and condition. There's a reason why, uh, you know, pirates have been uh, written about a lot and, and have a prominent role in popular culture. It's because they were pretty cool. Like, they weren't, you know, they weren't as bad as people think they are. Debate purpose literally hold the positions of the Dutch East India Company. Yeah. Um... I'm so happy about the live action because now I know what fish people are and I didn't have to watch 9 million episodes. Fun fact, one of the most successful pirates was a Chinese woman by the name of Zhang Yi Sao. A lot of pirates in the typical pirate era were ex-Navy that were decommissioned. Pirates are modern-day libertarians. That's not true. Not all of them. Um, pirates weren't anarchists. They were private contractors mostly or capitalists. Oh, oh my God. Dude, dude, listen to me. Most historical formations of pirates getting together because they had to operate outside of the boundaries of like, you know, colonizing forces ended up, uh, ended up having like, uh, a, a equitable pay in some forms. Like they did a collective ownership. They had a say, I don't know why you're, uh, 
I, I don't know why you're you're uh, you know I guess going against uh, plenty of historical works that have been written on this issue. Now that doesn't mean all of them were good. Obviously, like I said, Blackbeard is like a, a story of betrayal. Just fucking Google it. I don't know. The Great Conundrum. I was born too late to be a sea pirate. Born too early to be a space pirate. Born just in time to see the th three minute abrig at the top of the hour. But it's okay because I can do some piracy and steal a Twitch Prime by uh, connecting my parents' Amazon Prime account to my Twitch account where I get one free Prime subscription a month. Or I'll use the $5 and act like I don't, you know, I, I just I just avoided the ad break that way. But it's a bit like piracy. Or maybe you can get gifted a sub, you know? Yar! Here's the three-minute ad break now! Holy went away. It still very much exists today. Here's a map of all the piracy incidents over the past 40 years, at least the reported ones. From Indonesian pirates hijacking cargo ships in the Strait of Malacca, to Bangladeshi pirates holding fishermen hostage in exchange for ransoms, all the way to West Africa where Nigerian pirates steal oil off huge tankers and sell it on the black market. But most of the dots on this map are right here. The gateway to the Suez Canal, one of the busiest highways of global trade, off the coast of a country where piracy uniquely could thrive. The I remember telling my mama I wanted to be a pirate when I grew up because one piece and she yelled at me and showed me these guys. <laughs> the government of Somalia collapsed in the early 90s. The country fractured. Why would a left wing guy, uh, watch this guy? I cannot understand why you do this. I don't know, cause good editing, and I like uh, like think about the tangent that we just we just went on, where I talked to you about like the 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 ultimate betrayal from Blackbeard and how pirates are fucking. Some of the pirates were actually uh, like early adopters of communist formations before it before any sort of like Marxist lit. Um, I told you all of this shit. That's a fun tangent that we would not have gone on if I hadn't watched this video. It's it's so dumb. It's so silly that people just like cry about watching Johnny Harris videos. And instead of a central government, local clans started to control patches of the country. There was no real government to regulate this 3,000 kilometer coastline, the longest coastline in Africa. As a result, huge fishing boats, mostly from Iran and Yemen, took advantage of this free for all, swooping in to these unregulated Somali waters to fish. These foreign fishers would steal hundreds of millions of dollars of seafood every year with nets that tear up the seafloor, destroying the ecosystem and depleting the fish stock in the process. This illegal fishing by foreign vessels started to outsize the catch of locals whose water this was. Local Somali fishermen with their tiny boats could- At least he's like, at least he's admitting like that there were material reasons and he's not saying that like piracy is in the heart of like the Somalian, you know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> liberals will look at the story and be like, Somalians can't help themselves. They love piracy. This is what they do. This is what their heart, this is what is in their heart what is in their blood couldn't compete and soon this illegal foreign fishing eclipsed the catch of local somalis around the same time companies from switzerland do i think aiden ross will actually have kim jong-un on stream no because i'm not a fucking idiot or 12 okay so no i don't think that i think that uh he will not have kim jong-un on stream okay Please stop. And Somali's former colonizer, Italy, were illegally paying corrupt factions of the Somali government to take their toxic waste, some of it even being radioactive. Tons of this waste ended up in both Somalia's land and water, which would go on to have significant effects on the health of local communities. So, it's the 1990s, and between the illegal overfishing and the waste dumping, Somali people's main livelihood is being pillaged by foreigners, and they don't really have a government to help them out, to protect them. So some Somalis decided to fight back. An American cargo ship taken over by pirates. Somali fishermen got together and they formed an ocean militia. Some would call themselves the Coast Guard, and they would use these tiny boats to chase down foreign fishing vessels and demand that they pay a fine. Some experts have called this subsistence piracy because it was piracy, but it was also kind of fish Huh, yeah. Yo, try that shit in not a small town, but try that shit in like the American coast, okay? Like, what the fuck do you mean? 
No, it is a nation state exercising its own fucking concerns, national security concerns, and its own autonomy in its own fucking sea line. Like fishermen defending their livelihood from predatory foreigners. And at first, it was rare. I mean, if you look at the data, you just see a handful of successful incidents every year. Oh, and they were pretty basic too. Like in one of these early incidents of Somali piracy back in like 1994. How did you let that Voa screenshot go by? He's trolling you. I mean, he he's not. Four. You got this wooden boat full of 26 Somali men claiming to be the Somali Coast Guard. And they go up to a shipping vessel and they get on board. They like hijack it for five days, but realize they can't really do anything. So they just steal as much as they can from the cargo ship and just go on their way. Luffy, Monkey D. Luffy started off uh, with, with, you know, big dreams, but also small, uh, small wins. You know what I mean? Yoinking shit here and there. He was uh, drifting away in a fucking wooden cask for uh, a, a long period of time. You know what I mean? Not a long period of time, but short period of time. Same with Nami, right? In a barrel. Well, not Nami. Nami was doing small hits left and right, medium hits. It just, that's how it works. Yes, this was piracy, but it was super basic and kind of harmless. It was a bunch of locals filling in on the power vacuum left by their non-existent government. And this is how it was for a long time. Loosely organized gangs of armed Somali men climbing aboard cargo ships or fishing vessels, intimidating the crews to collect fines, or sometimes asking for informal license fees for fishing in their waters, even though they didn't have any authority to give out licenses. They did it to get money, to basically be like, if you're going to fish in our waters, you need to pay us. And the rest of the world didn't really know about this. It like wasn't big enough news for anyone to care. But that would soon change. Across the region, 80,000 people are dead. At least 22,000 of them were killed here in Sri Lanka. So there's kind of a turning point. Christmas 2004. This tsunami was devastating, mostly in Southeast Asia, but it also hit Somalia's really delicate coast, destroying homes and boats and crippling an already delicate economy and food supply. The tsunami took the lives of some 150 people in Somalia and poisoned the precious little water supply that people had here. And it also washed up some of that toxic waste that had been dumped off their shores. This led to a UN investigation, which concluded that the waste was likely causing severe damage to the health of local people. And at this point, Somalia still isn't one country. There's some parts of the country that are peaceful and safe and under government control, but most of Somalia is still a patchwork of competing clans and warlords. A it's like... A hotbed for terrorism and organized crime networks should be, for all intents and purposes, when you hear that, immediately know it does not matter, no matter where we are in the world, immediately know CIA, okay? No centralized government. Why is there no centralized government? Who's backing some of these clans and warlords, okay? Like, just remember, always U.S. intervention, which, you know, classic like Hassan, oh, God, you love talking about America bad, America bad, America bad, except like it's not like the the uh, the nation did not have some level of democratic organization. They did just like every other country, both in that region or and all around the world. OK, CIA activities in Somalia. <sighs> I mean, it goes beyond this here. The CIA agents reportedly played a significant role in manipulating the outcome of the 1967 elections. The ascension of Prime Minister Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Egal was in large part financed by the thousands of dollars of covert support to Egal and other pro-Western elements in ruling Somali Youth League Party by the CIA. Um, and then the Civil War. Uh, as always, there's um, uh, as always there's backlash towards that. What is this? There's a YouTube, YouTuber called Film Cow. It's a series called Vulo Lives. And at the end of the weird shit, there's a segment where they explain a lot of the military CI operations in different countries. Please understand what the CIA has been in Somalia for so long. If you look at its geography, if the Suez Canal is the choke point of international trade, Somalia is the choke point before the choke point. Um, but yeah, July 12th, uh, 1993, Black Hawk Down. U.S. State Department issued a warning that the CIA had received intelligence regarding a planned large-scale assault on U.N. officials in Mogadishu. Gordon and Professor Rafael 
she Joke Njoku, the American contingent of UNISOM 2, responded to the CIA's intelligence by launching a helicopter attack that resulted in the deaths of 70 Somalis who had been discussing a peace proposal. Shortly after the raid, it was disclosed that the CIA report had been incorrect. Um, yes, I have seen the Johnny Harris short uh, that, where he's making fun of me. We still uh, have black sites in uh, Somalia. Jeremy Scahill, in August 2011, uh, edition of The Nation magazine, reported on the CIA compound in Mogadishu's Aden Ade International Airport. According to Scahill, the facility looks like a small gated community with more than a dozen buildings behind large protective walls and secured by guard towers at each of its four corners of the facility. CIA runs a counterterrorism training program for the Somali intelligence agents and operatives aimed at building an indigenous strike force capable of snatch operations that targeted combat operations against all members of Al-Shabaab. Um, so yeah, it's like, dude, think about it this way. Think about it this way. Like we're looking at Somalia, right? Fucking random ass country. Random ass fucking country. Like why the fuck? If you have nothing, if you don't know anything about American history, when I say like, oh, I wonder if America had any involvement in Somalia and, and, you know, caused this destabilization by trying to create a uh, stable, quote-unquote, stable government that was, like, Western-focused, western back, And um, you and if you're geared from random, question mark, yeah, like, random, in comparison to where America is, man, the fuck do you mean? Like, random as opposed to, I don't know, Mexico, okay? Like, I'm talking about where America is and where fucking Somalia is. Do you understand? At that point, we're not even in fucking West Africa. The point I'm trying to make is... The point I'm trying to make is... Why the fuck would you ever think in a million years that, that your favorite commentator is in the wrong when he tells you, like, America does a lot of stuff. Sure, it's bad. They tell you it's bad. But, you know, some of that stuff is a necessity, especially the stuff that we're doing now, okay? Like, why would that guy lead you astray? You know, it doesn't seem like America could be like at the root of all evil on the planet, right? God, seems like seems like this other guy who keeps fucking telling me that America is at the root of all evil all the fucking time just has like a one note, America bad, America bad, America bad. And he doesn't think about it with the, the uh, you know, like genuine, he doesn't offer a genuine intellectual thought. He's just saying America bad and moving on. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's, it's great. You will believe that until you, I don't know, do a little bit deeper of a reading and realize that, like, yeah, America does have its hands in every fucking pocket. 800 military bases all around the world doesn't happen on accident. You know what I mean? Hotbed for terrorism and organized crime networks that control different parts of the country. And piracy, this thing that started off as an informal Coast Guard, was maturing in sophisticated ways. By 2005, you start to see pirates using motherships, larger ships that allow them to go way further off their coast, and then to use speedboats to attack like they did to this cargo ship. This was a huge level up. For it's kind of sick, not gonna lie, dude. Fuck, man, pirates are so cool. It's like bullshit, but... For Somali pirates. Oh. <laughs> These motherships started to be equipped with radar, which allowed the pirates to have new ways of detecting their prey. You start to see them have GPS systems or satellite phones to communicate. Pirates start looking at shipping industry blogs and databases to locate and track shipping vessels. This was turning from basic subsistence piracy to something more sophisticated. Pirates started to realize just how much money and value was flowing through this corridor, headed towards the Suez Canal, like one of the busiest highways of international trade in the world. And with these new and improved tactics came more profitable business models that would change everything for pirates. Police in Finland say the the owner of the missing freighter Arctic Sea has received a demand for a ransom. It was the early 2000s, and it was the beginning of the era of ransoms. You were kidnapped. Bro, they literally, they they leveled up. Like, they leveled up, they got the mothership. Of course they're going to fucking need more money, you know what I mean? Yeah. ...by Somali pirates mm -hmm. 
and you were held hostage for more than two years. Yeah. Hey, Michael, it's Johnny Harris. Hi, Johnny, good to, good to hear from you. Hi. So we had a really interesting conversation with this American journalist named Michael Scott Moore. He was kidnapped by Somali pirates and held for almost three years before being released for a $1.6 million ransom. The people say, oh, but they're just frustrated fishermen. Mm. They're not. They were in the 90s, but it was a much bigger deal than just fishermen turning to piracy. Ransoms changed everything. Pirates were realizing how easy it was to hold a ship hostage and to demand a multi-million dollar ransom to extract a huge profit. He's a fed, let me out. I don't know, what the fuck was he, I don't know the backstory, but what the fuck was he doing on the ship, like, as a journalist? I guess he wanted to embed with them so he could, like, link up with the pirates or something. Profit, which attracted the attention of warlords who saw I don't know a anything. business opportunity. I don't, know, I don't know about this guy. Um... Warlords now wanted to fund hijackings, like this one, where pirates were hijacking a Ukrainian coal ship. I doubt he's traveling a, from South. I doubt he was a Fed, though. I think you guys are being ridiculous. Like they would, you know, they they did they did apprehend people and uh, and and demand ransoms. So Africa to Turkey, they could hold it hostage and release it only in exchange for seven hundred thousand dollars, which is what they got. Or another instance where pirates riding on speedboats captured this Japanese ship and its 20 person crew, holding them hostage until somebody coughed up $2 million. There was investment in these pirate operations because there was a return to be had. And by 2007, around 30% of the world's pirate attacks occurred within this circle. But wait, let's keep this in perspective. I love that we always talk about how, like, uh, negotiating with the demands of bad actors, like non-state actors, actually creates this marketplace. But that similar principle, for some weird reason, is never applied to, like, all of these uh, counter-sex trafficking operations who quite literally have created baby marketplaces, okay? Including the one that, uh, uh, that, that the Sound of Freedom uh, was supposed to uh, portray our O U R fuck Tim Ballard perspective. This actually wasn't particularly high. If you look at a graph of all of the other regions of the world, you'll see that this wasn't by any means an outlier, but watch what happens the next year. This line going up represents the expansion of the piracy industry in Somalia. There was way too much money to be made here, and warlords were getting better and better at investing in and running pirate businesses. By 2009, this body of water off of Somalia was home to nearly half of all piracy incidents on Earth. And look at this graph of the average ransoms paid. In 2008, the average ransom was a million dollars. A total of $30 million was paid out that year. And you got to keep this in perspective. These were huge sums of money for anyone, but especially poor fishermen turned pirates in a country with a GDP per person of $517. Yeah, I mean, if you want like a permanent solution to the piracy problem, you work to, you work to fucking solve that issue, right? Like, because, you know, like motherfuckers in Norway aren't doing piracy. You feel me? But, you know, probably not per year but even still this was just the beginning if you simply uh, refuse to pay i mean the pirates have a lot of hostages phrasing i mean what do you mean they used to like it's the perfect example <laughs> like they are the ogs right material conditions improve and you are no longer you, you don't need to fucking uh do piracy anymore you can work in the global marketplace and engage in trade as an equal actor. Uh, the consequences of, of those being shot, for instance, would be unimaginable. All of this influx of ransom cash kicked off a pirate economy cycle, where pirates would attack a ship, hold the crew hostage, and get paid a high ransom. They would bring this back to the clan leader warlord who funded them, which would make that person rich, and allow them to invest in bigger boats, and more guns, and recruiting more young men, and appeasing the local coastal communities who would support them, which they would use to hijack more ships in more sophisticated ways. And it repeated and repeated, getting more and more sophisticated and dangerous each time. So a businessman who, who gets to be so rich that he needs to protect his business interests with gunmen 
that's a warrior. And a, a, a pirate boss is nothing else. He's a, he's a businessman who invests in piracy. And the pirate businesses had lawyers and cooks and banknote tellers with machines. Bro, this is just like Monkey D. Luffy. Oh my God. Did they have a musician? Did they find a skeleton by the name of Brooke who became their musician? Like, what's happening? Dun, 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 dun. Did they get uh, Black Lake Sanji as a cook? God damn. Machines that could detect fake bills so that they could know if their ransom cash was real or not. There was this great reporting at the time in 2009 by Reuters. One of their journalists went to a pirate town that had been a sleepy fishing village, but had turned into a booming pirate hub, or in their words, pirate lair. What Reuters found was that this economy was so booming that they had created a stock exchange where any local in the town could invest what they had into a piracy business. There were dozens of these piracy businesses and you can invest in the one that you think is going to go get a successful ransom by hijacking a... Did you know you can bet on pirate raids and you get money from their loot? Wait, what? international shipping vessel and people made a lot of money one local said they made $75,000 in just a couple months because they had made a good bet on the right pirates pirate bosses were not just you know top pirates they were investors who had a portfolio of businesses these pirate businesses would in turn support these communities help fund the schools and the hospitals in order to curry favor with the locals to make sure that they would support them running their businesses. But the people who were really getting rich here were mostly the clan leaders, the warlords, who were building massive villas and buying luxury cars and throwing lavish drug laden. I like that. I like that we're like, man, it's <laughs> the earnings off the backs of the laborers, the pirates were not exactly being uh not exactly being used uh, to to generate like even development. I wonder if you could translate that kind of criticism to to like a uh non-black outside of the capitalist uh hegemony, uh you know, black market operators and and maybe to uh I don't know, every fucking capitalist formation. Like you're just describing like what companies do, you know what I mean? It's so funny in parties this was no longer the diy coast guard this was now lucrative organized crime and yet some of these pirate groups still tried to make a moral case as to why they were justified in doing this saying that this wasn't piracy this was retaliation for all of the exploitation of somali waters by foreign countries you see this in a 2008 hijacking of a Ukrainian vessel when these pirates demand $8 million claiming that they would use the money to clean up the toxic waste that European companies had dumped in their waters. Yes, European companies have dumped toxic waste in Somalia. Were these pirates actually going to use the $8 million to clean that up? Probably not. At least that's what we found in our reporting. A lot of the moralistic like Robin Hood narrative became really thin once warlords got involved and once they demanded a return for their investment. And you just start to see how thin this moral argument is when when pirates start boarding ships and just shooting crew at random to show how serious they were and to increase the likelihood of getting a high ransom payout. Uh, unfortunately, there, uh, there is one seaman from mainland which was, uh, who was killed by, by the Somali pirates. Or when they started hijacking UN ships that were full of food and medical aid meant for Somali people. Uh, the ship apparently was bound for Mombasa, Kenya, and the shipment included vegetable oil, corn, soy blend, and other basic food commodities bound for uh, people in countries including Somalia, Uganda, and Kenya. This was about money and power, and it was able to thrive because of a country that didn't have a government that actually controlled the country. By 2011, there were 237 piracy incidents here. Over 1,200 hostages were taken that year. 35 of them died while in captivity. This was becoming more and more deadly and more and more lucrative. Let's go back to that graph of the average why didn't the company clean it up johnny you want to fucking talk shit about thin moral justifications yeah i know like we're awfully quiet about what the western corporations were doing you know what i mean whether it be overfishing in somali uh uh seashore uh on the on the somali coast or or dumping toxic waste and then not doing anything not being like um pushed by the international community to engage like, what are they supposed to fucking do? You know what I mean? What are they What are they supposed to do? People don't act this way 
if they have options. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like they're like, oh man, I'm gonna go to school and and uh fucking work at a tech company or some shit. <laughs> oh Jesus! Ransoms that were paid. You can see it grow up to around $5 million for the average ransom. The total number of ransoms paid in 2011, $150 million. It was getting out of hand, but it would take a few key events for the world to really take notice. Ladies and gentlemen, dear gentlemen, all ships stay inside, stay inside, stay inside. We are trying to stay ashore. Try run away from them now. Stay inside, everybody. This is a, a real alarm. Please stay inside. There's this funny thing Ooh. in international news where Big in order for the world to take notice of something. Big fucking moolah, baby. God damn. They hit the fucking, they hit the big one. Okay, now I feel like this fucking fly is like antagonizing me. Like it's literally doing it to piss me off. I keeps keeps flying directly in my fucking face. It sort of has to affect, like, Westerners. And that's no different with pirates. There was this one incident in uh, fall of 2005 where a group of pirates showed up to a luxury cruise ship. It was full of Western tourists. They hit us with um, uh, rocket, rocket grenades, RPGs. And, um, and the, they, there was a woman in her cabin, and she was fortunately in, in her bathroom. But a rocket grenade went right through and blew the whole cabin out. The cruise ship escaped, but it still led to global news coverage. Another incident was in 2008 when a Ukrainian ship was hijacked by these pirates. Little did these pirates know, they had just stumbled upon a shipment of tanks and grenades and ammunition bound for Sudan. They were demanding $35 million to give it back, holding the crew and the ship hostage. The US and Russia both freaked out here, and they sent in their navies to like monitor the situation to make sure the pirates weren't gonna take the weapons off the boat. In the end, the pirates agreed to a $3.2 million. Wait, what? Why is Ukraine sending weapons? Wait, what? dollars to give it back holding the oh, fuck in the crew and the ship hostage the u.s and russia both freaked out here and they sent in their navies to like monitor the situation to make sure the pirates weren't going to take the weapons off the boat in the this is a ukrainian ship selling russian weapons is that what it is classic yanukovych selling off ukrainian army on russian command selling old ussr uh weapons on stockpile to sedan in the end, the pirates agreed to a $3.2 million payout, and the secret weapons shipment continued onward. It was a big scare, and it was another step in waking the world up to how big of a deal this was becoming. But the biggest event happened a few months later. A U.S. container ship was traveling from Oman to Kenya when four pirates boarded and hijacked the ship, holding the crew hostage and demanding $2 million. The U.S. government has a firm policy that it doesn't negotiate with hostages. But what they do do is send in their military. So after four days, the Navy SEALs arrived with snipers. They shot three of the four pirates and rescued the crew. It was an incident that was later depicted in this Tom Hanks movie. These were dramatic events, a hostage situation with snipers and Navy SEALs, and it spread into the international news cycle in a way that Somali piracy just hadn't before. But Captain Phillips was taken hostage for almost five days and then rescued by the U.S. Navy. It was clear that this had become too lucrative of an economy. There was too much incentive for warlords to get in on all of this money for it to stop. The only way to slow this down was a serious intervention. As we were reporting this story, I kept asking, like, why is this such a difficult problem to solve? And we asked all of the experts we interviewed, and we have a pretty good idea now why this is way more complicated than expected. First off, guns. You can't really carry guns on international shipping vessels. Yeah. Partly because there's international gun laws that are complicated. Yeah, because, like, the rest of the world are a bunch of fucking pussies, dog. You know what I mean? They're not like, America! Like, oh, God, international law dictates we can't have fucking guns. It's like... Bullshit, brother. You fucking, you fucking come and take it, brother. You know what I'm saying? Fuck, fuck you. Hey. That's why I always keep that fucking thing on me.
I'll shoot at the fucking woke-ass ocean. Come at me, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Better not even, better not fuck with me, ocean. Keep that fucking thing on me at all times. I don't want no orcas coming into my shit, brother. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Did partly because shipping companies don't want guns on boats because it can be a weird liability thing. You can't just have like a gun in a safe box somewhere. Why Second, not? it's hard to send in the Navy's. Yeah, exactly. You don't need a gun in a safe box. You need a gun outside in the wild. Don't put that shit in a safety box anyway. I personally weld out the safety from all my weapons. Whenever a weapon of mine comes with a fucking safety pin, I take that shit out to patrol these waters because pirates often don't look like pirates until it's too late, at which point they're prone to use their victims as human shields against any threatening Navy. So unless you've got like the best snipers in the world, like the Navy SEALs, it's actually really hard to use just like military force against these pirates. And lastly, you have to remember what we're talking about. We're talking about- uh, uh, uh. Wow, you mean to tell me Aiden Ross is a fake Kim Jong-un impersonator? And he didn't actually get the fucking leader of the Democratic People's uh, Republic of Korea? That's crazy, man. I'm so shocked, chat. Yeah, I'm so shocked. I'm 12 years old, and I really thought he was going to have the real guy on. I'm 12, or I'm not 12, I'm 32, but I have the brain of a 12-year-old. That's crazy. About the open ocean, huge swaths of water. It's really challenging to monitor and control this in an effective way. It's one reason why piracy has always thrived on the open sea. But even despite all these challenges, governments and businesses hey. put their heads together and they figured something out. The first one's kind of boring. It's this report that this international shipping organization put out that basically teaches ships and captains and companies how to protect themselves. Calm down, bro. Hey. They recommend them using this high pressure hose that allows them to just like spray water at the pirates. They started recommending putting barbed wire and razor wire around your ship. Kind of gnarly. Put locks on your doors. Increase your surveillance. Like this is pretty basic stuff. Create a safe room or a citadel where you can like lock yourself in. Too many people in Hotscore believe it was real? No, man. They just literally think that they think it's a meme. There's no way they believe it's real. I don't want to believe that they believe it's real. Please, I'm sorry. If you get hijacked. But one of the big things they did was create this internationally recognized corridor where ships could all travel together like in a caravan, sometimes escorted by a Navy ship from one of these countries, helping them navigate this really busy but very vulnerable part of the international shipping highway. And another huge step was, in spite of all the complicated gun laws, Vessels were now allowed to employ armed guards to stand watch as they navigate these waters. So now you've got like security guards with guns on the ship who have nothing else to do but like protect the boat. And guess what? All of these strategies totally worked. I mean, look at this graph. After its all time high in 2011, hijacking incidents plummeted because of these interventions. But this leaves us with kind of a complicated- A song getting Kim Jong-un is a huge call for Aiden. This is why you've fallen off. You can't even get the Taliban on stream. Yeah, I know, the Talibussy. ...aided resolution here. These communities were left behind by their government. They don't have the infrastructure of a society where people can thrive and work. That's for a lot of reasons, but it's in part because of the pillaging and the exploitation from outsiders. And so while these warlords who committed horrific crimes to get rich deserve no moral justification. It is morally complicated when you look at people who are just trying to live, whose waters have been poisoned by toxic waste, whose country has been pillaged, and who turned to piracy as a last resort. But I'm not gonna go into the ethical dilemma here. I think you all can fight that out in the comments if you want. Um, I'd love to see what you have to say. The fact is, piracy was solved in the Horn of Africa because of these interventions, at least for the most part. But just as Somali piracy was declining, incidents of piracy started- 300k viewers watching Aiden Ross get the cheapest Craigslist Kim Jong-un impersonated to show up on stream and stutter his way through a borderline non-existent interpretation. My friend, one, a lot of those numbers are fake. Two, 
there are a lot more stupid people, especially on Twitter and especially online, than there are actually fucking relatively intelligent people. Okay? So, no, there's not, like, actually 300k people. It's bought it out the fucking dick. However, there's probably at least 100k people in there, which is a pretty solid number. Okay? Um, it's just, like, there's, there's you know, I, I've given up on on trying to course correct. Okay? I've given up on trying to fight uh, against the stupidity, the sheer stupidity online. Uh, I've I've completely given up on all that. There's nothing you can do about it. You just gotta you just gotta kick back and uh, I don't know. Enjoy the show if you can, if that's like interesting for you. Popping up on the other side of the continent, the Gulf of Guinea took. Chatter saying, "Why are there 300k idiots watching this as they themselves watch it to update chat for no reason?" Yeah, exactly. So. Somalia's title as the piracy hotspot of the world. These attacks. The most important thing is Aiden 100% believe is really Kim Jong Un. Yeah, the funniest part about this is that uh, a lot of people say Aiden Ross is stupid, which is true. He is. He's not the smartest guy. But many of you are stupid enough to think that he is that stupid. Okay? No, he's just acting. Like, he doesn't actually believe it. The reality is you, in a weird way, become stupider than Aiden Ross when you believe that Aiden Ross is actually uh, uh, not aware that this is an impersonator. You know what I mean? So, everybody likes to believe that they're fucking brilliant, that they're, like, super smart, and yet, you know, uh, you're duped by those who you personally think are dumb. You're duped into being, uh, well, I guess you're, if it's entertaining, it's entertaining, you know what I mean? But you're duped into believing that this is, like, someone who genuinely thinks that that's what's going on happen for different reasons and they look quite different. They're usually Nigerian pirates boarding oil tankers to steal the oil that they feel like was stolen from their land. The international community is now turning its focus here and this is a more complicated thing to solve for a lot more reasons. But the fact is piracy won't go away as long as the ingredients that have always fueled it exist. Frustrated young men with no chance of finding work in an economy incentivized and organized by clan leaders looking to get rich on the high seas, operating in a gray area where the government and the society that should support them and employ them doesn't exist or is too weak to help, leaving them to fend for themselves and to turn to more and more sophisticated forms of crime in the process. The One Piece is real, man. Would you have the real Kim on stream, be honest? I mean, yeah, I would love to, except that would never happen. Are you out of your fucking mind? The pirate era will never die. The new era is, is not as... Many people are saying that the new era is not as good as the golden era. These kids are all fucking losers, but in reality, they are the ones who are truly going to find the one piece, you know what I mean? Which is real, all right? And no, I don't mean Israel. I don't mean Palestine. I mean, like, it's real. The One Piece is a real thing. The worst generation is the best generation. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump.